Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Jed, and welcome to my video blog, Apologetics and Prophecy. Sorry that um, I've been gone for a couple weeks. Um, the first week, couple weeks ago, I was away from the studio, and then last week I had a very bad chest cold, which I still have a little tinge of. So if you if you hear me clearing my throat a little bit during this, I apologize. <coughs> but this week I want to start a series entitled, As is the Days of Noah. As is the day of no Days of Noah. And why is that? Because we want to look at um, prophecy through an apologetical lens, meaning a biblical lens. What's the Bible say about prophecy? And as we look in the day and age today, how do we know that we are living in the last days? And so, you know, Matthew, I mean, Jesus on the, Sur on the Olivet Discourse in the book of Matthew he says in chapter 36, saying that, you know, in verse 36 in chapter 24, it says, But of that day and hour no one knows, but only, but not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So he's talking about the day of his return. Nobody knows. But there are signs, because he says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of this will the son of man be. So he's given us a clue. He says nobody knows the day or the hour, but the season. What will it look like before his return? It'll be like as it was in the days of Noah. And so we can learn a lot about what it was like in the days of Noah, because I believe we are in the days of Noah now. And what do I mean by that? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says, of course, we know chapter 3, I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 3, where it says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. And he gives a, a description of what people and society and culture will be like then. But he says something important here down in verse 13. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The old King James says, well, wax worse and worse, like the waxing of the moon when it's going from full back into new, the new moon, when it's it's declining, it's waxing. And and it means it's 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 uh waxing full, like a full moon, going to a full moon. So, you know, we can see that the Bible declares that in the last days that will be like the days of Noah, and Timothy tells us that there'll be perilous times and evil men will wax worse and worse. So, you know, it's it doesn't escape our um, knowledge these days to see uh, the amount of evil that is rampant in our world today. You know, the politicians want to talk about gun control and want to talk about mental illness, but we as Christians, as the church, we understand and know that when we see people walking into into a shopping center and just shooting people at random and killing them at you know with no sanctity of life just pure evil we wonder we want to know we we want of course the secular world's going to try to come up with the answers and of course we know what the answer is as Christians it's the evil that's in the heart of man what could drive a person to to go and do such horrific acts as we've seen in the news today but really, you know, there's no more guns on the street today than there were 30 years ago or 40 years ago. But when I was, you know, back when I was 10 years old, it wasn't commonplace, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13 times a year there would be mass shootings. And so we need to understand that it's not, it's, it's, it's not the, the availability to do the violence. It's not the, the environment, but it is the heart of man as we're getting closer to that time that Jesus is coming again. So we know that we are in the last days. But how do we know, in order for us to understand what Jesus meant by, as you know, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be when the coming of the man will be. And so in order for us to truly understand that, we actually have to go back and look at the account of what it was like during before the flood on the planet Earth. 
And so we need to understand that, that you know, the pre-flood world wasn't a bunch of cavemen. They were a, a, they were a, a accessful society. People lived much longer, so they had, they had good health. Um, there, was, there was a lot of wealth. There was a lot of prosperity. So it wasn't that there was a, a, a lack of things, but there was a lack of something, and that was, that was righteousness in the heart of man. And you have to understand, the same hearts that beated in mankind before the flood are the same hearts that beat in mankind today. And so when we go back and we look and we want to see what it was like as it was in the days of Noah and compare that to what we re see in the news today, what we see in culture and society today. And does that mirror today? Does what we see in the past with the Bible records mirror what we see today? And so that's the question I want to ask you because we have to answer to the people around us what in the world's going on? They're going to say it's gun control. They're going to say it's it's you know we need to have um, we need to 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 have more more mental illness. It's it's a mental problem, an illness problem. We need to you know it's a loving problem. They weren't loved enough, but we have to understand that it is the only problem that it is is the same problem that's been around since the fall in the Garden of Eden. That is the heart of man. You have to understand that the same heart that beat in that person that went in and shoot those people, the same DNA traces back to the same ancestor as you and I. And that's a hard pill to swallow. That's, for, that's hard for us to, to admit that because that's why we have to say it's some kind of outside influence that's causing this. It can't be the heart of mankind that, that's that evil, but it is because we know because if we are living in the last days, if it is as in the days of Noah, let's look at the days of Noah. So chapter 6 of Genesis, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, and all whom they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth of, in those days and, and also afterwards. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children, these were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness, and this is important, this is, this is the key. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil and continually. You know, he says, that's a really important verse. That is the verse we're going to be focusing on. And he says, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am... I." I'm sorry that I have made them, but Noah found grace on the earth. And so he goes on and talks about the genealogy of Noah. And he says in verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. So we see a key here that not only was man's heart evil continually, but that there was violence filling the earth. If God was to look down at the United States today, and he would look at the hearts of those people, of most of the people today, not the Christians, but the world. You know, the Christians are a different um, animal. We are not of this world. We are passing through this world. You need to understand that. But the world itself, the, the unbelieving, the, the, the reject Christ-rejecting world that he sees is full of violence. And their heart is evil continually, just like you and I were before we came to the Lord. So the number one thing that we see that we know that we are as in the days of Noah, it is the days of Noah today, is that we see the evil that's running rampant on the earth. That's waxing, it's growing worse and worse. It's coming to a climax. And that climax is the return of Jesus Christ. So as we see evil, it grieves our heart. We pray for the families. We pray for the first responders where our heart breaks for the evil that is in the world. It grieves our heart like it does the heart of God. 
It said he grieved. He was sorry for God. He wasn't that he was angry with mankind. He was grieved with mankind because of their evil in their heart continually. And so for us, when we look around, we need to understand that this is only another sign. We need to know that Jesus is right at the door. We're living in the very cusp of, of the, 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 the climax of, of mankind's history. The dispensation of the church age is coming to a close. And we need to be ready and prepared. And we also need to be ready to give an answer to those people to understand that it is a heart issue. And that's what it is. But there's an answer to the heart issue. And that is Jesus Christ. The answer is the gospel message that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that all of us are evil. We despised God. We shook our fists at God. We were evil in our hearts and minds and thoughts and tents of the heart. But when we, when we realized that that was against God and we had judgment coming, we humbled ourselves before God and we received his forgiveness through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And we became born again. We became his children. And so today I say, that we need to be spreading that message to those that are looking at the hopelessness, they're looking at the pain, they're looking at the sorrow, and tell them that this is a sign that Jesus is coming again. He came the first time. And the reason why he's holding off coming now is that he wants them and others to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So we need to understand that one of the, the first sign we're looking at this week is that that man saw that the verse five of chapter six of Genesis, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. We read a sentence like that and think, oh that can't be. All of mankind evil? That can't be. But you have to understand that the Bible says that with, with the wages of sin is death, you know, and that's the evil. We're con those that are the unbelievers are considered the wicked and the evil and the damned. And, they, and, and that is all of mankind, not just a little bit. These people, they were related to, to Noah, but Noah found grace in the Lord's eyes. Doesn't mean that he found, you know, he didn't earn a ticket on the ark. He found grace. God decided to choose to pick Noah. I guess he was the best of the pick for him, but I don't think so. I think Noah just found grace, and he became the one that would, would live through the flood, that would destroy the evil, and mankind would start again, but over the course of time, like it did before the flood. Mankind would be, again start to fill the earth and become, become this marching towards judgment. But this, the next time that God comes, he's not going to judge with a flood. He's going to judge with fire. And so we need to know that, and we need to be prepared for that. And we need to understand that for us as Christians, that there's a coming kingdom, and that his return is at any moment. So I just want to say that today, that you know next week we'll look at another sign that we're in the days of Noah, could be, you know, we, we see a lot of things happening in the world that point to the last days as being in the days of Noah, because we are in the days of Noah. And we need to understand that the, 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 the world before the flood represents the world before the rapture of the church. It does. We are in it right now. And so we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. So I'm just telling you, and if you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ, and as I shared a little bit before about the gospel, it's very important for you to repent of your sins. That means to turn from your sins and turn towards God. But that's not good enough. You can, you can recognize you're a sinner. You can repent of your sins. But unless you receive Jesus Christ, unless you receive the pardon for your sins through the finished work of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you, you won't be saved. And so you need to receive Jesus Christ. And all you have to do to receive Jesus Christ is ask. I'm going to look at, I'm going to read one more thing out of Luke 11 to show you that how, the, the, how God sees us. And in Luke 11, a very interesting thing that Jesus says here, Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, he says, um, Luke chapter 11, let me find it here. Um, it says in Luke chapter 11, 
he said that, um, you know, he asked, he says, he says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who finds, to him who knocks, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you being evil, see, that's what we are. God said it, not me. We're evil. That's who we are. But we being evil, we know how to give good gifts to our children. You know, if our kids came to us and asked, we're not going to say, ah, here, take a stone, kid. That's how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask them? So if you recognize you're a sinner, you realize that you fall short of the glory of God, you're willing to turn from that sin, to give it up to see what it is, to turn away, and you turn to God. Today, all you have to do is ask, and he will give it to you. You can receive Jesus today, and you need to do that, because the days are evil, and they're going to get worse and worse, unfortunately. But the Lord is going to come again, and when he does, you will be caught up together with him to be in the air, and forever we will be with the Lord. So that is the great joy. Yes, pray for those in El Paso. Pray for Detona. Pray for the uh, people that were stabbed in Orange County. Pray for those uh, families that are going through this and, and for the unbelieving world that is trying to search for an answer and be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. Bye, brothers and sisters, and I hope to see you again next week. Lord willing, thank you.